Hello everyone. It is Saturday, March 16th, 2019, and I'm recording this video. It's the How to Run a March Madness Bracket in Excel 2019 version. We have a pre-selection Sunday version up here right now, and I'll get to all this stuff in a minute, but uh, uh, most of you have not seen me like this, so I need to have eye surgery. I'm kind of blind, and um, I got some glasses, and I have to wear these, so I don't know if I'm going to make these things cool. I'm probably not, but I'm going to have to try because I can't see otherwise. So welcome to this world of looking at me like this. Now let's get to it um a lot of things going on this year with the march madness bracket i've been doing this so long this is going to be the most amazing march madness bracket video you've ever seen in your life by the way um, i'm the bracketeer i have been doing this for so long uh it's been at least eight or nine years i think it's been since 2009 or 10 yet um, and what this is is this is just a way to run like an office pool in your, uh, you know, in your office where you can't have everyone going online and you know filling out the brackets on ESPN or Yahoo or whatever it is because people won't do it. They're too old. They don't know what the internet is, and they just or you just got to pass it around because you're physically doing something where you see people. So you print this thing out, and um, I have this version you print out, and I also have one in, in Google Sheets, which is right here for people who want to fill it out online in Google Sheets. Um, this is also the Google Sheet version, which will be changed. Now, all this stuff is just sample teams because the, the selections haven't been announced yet. Now, this bracket's pretty cool. It's pretty fun. Um, it's really intuitive. You end up using the mouse here to click on these little validation cells and pick teams, right? That, and then and they, they color code themselves. You put your name up here. This is Ken's second entry. You do whatever your name is. You have your entry. You fill the whole thing out, which I've already done here um, in Virginia. So I'm rooting for Virginia. And and then you, what you do is this thing can be protected or unprotected. Uh, what you can do to protect it is you go up to review up top and choose protect sheet. And just press OK with no password or anything in there. And then people can only choose uh, the cell. So you can't really choose outside. It doesn't work. It doesn't work outside. It's only the cells that you want to have them choose that they can choose. And then um, they can save it and send it back to you or email it back to you. And then you can just unprotect it by, you know, say you're not in, in review. You just go over to the review tab up top, go unprotect sheet, and it does it automatically because there's no password. So so you can then unprotect it, and then what you want to do is you want to grab this area down here in the bottom left, and if you don't want to grab it all and highlight it all, you can go up here and, and click this thing called Apex. If you click up here, you want to copy this rectangle, and copy that rectangle, and then you're going to get an email me, from me if you buy this, this bracket on KenBergerman.com. You get a master bracket. And you copy that area and you go into this all data sheet of the master bracket file, which only, you only get if you pay for it. And you'll have a bunch of entries here uh, over to the left in these columns. And you'll just want to do something called paste values. You don't want to paste, you don't, you don't want to do a regular paste. You want to right click in the first available cell, which will be yellow here after you're stacking and pasting your entries here. And you want to do paste special values which is the one, two, three, one right here. Or if you just click that paste special, when you right click to paste here, you can choose this one values. And then it comes in as values. If you don't choose it as values and you end up doing it regular or just press control V because you're not thinking real fast, it's going to give you a bunch of errors. Uh, you just press yes, yes, until you get out of that. And then you're going to want to undo and control. You see how it's broken here. It's going to screw everything up. And then you just go, yeah, I can't. It's, it's a real mess if you do that, that pace. So you want to undo, which is control Z. Control Z will bring you back to blank and you'll be fine. So if you get that error, which everyone does when you're doing hundreds of these at night, um, that's that's how to get out of this. Just yes through it and then undo and you'll be fine. Now, when you put your entries in here, you then have this automatic scoring. Um, uh, this is the actual master bracket where, where when the when you get everyone's entrance in and the actual results happen, you're gonna change games right here uh, to what the actual results are, and you can also change how many points per round you want to give people. Say you want to give them one point if they get a first round game right, maybe three points in the second round, 
five points in the third round, you know, really give people a lot of points when they get the final rounds right. You can change anything you want here, and it's going to be dynamic in the standings uh, automatically. So all you do in the standing sheet is just right-click and refresh after you've got all your, your entrance picks in here, and you've been choosing the winners of the games as they actually come in in your master bracket file. You just refresh, and you end up with fun stuff showing the order of people and how many points they currently have, how many potential points they have remaining, and total possible points if they got all the rest of the games right. Um, and you also see if you have any errors in your file, uh, which would be errors about team names. And I will talk briefly about team names, and then we're going to do some really interesting stuff. So in, in your main entry, entry file here, we have a custom team here. And now these names are not correct. I'm going to be doing another video on Sunday night, I, but I wanted to do this ahead of time because there's so much going on here. And there's so many cool things that I just have to do a super long video. And, and if you stay with me, because it's really going to be awesome. Now, uh, you can adjust different team names here. If you don't want to call Virginia, you want to call them UVA, you can change the custom team name to UVA up here. And this is in the regular entry bracket, by the way. But if you do that, you want to um, to do it to everybody. You don't want to change it to one file and send different names to other people because we need a master team name that needs to be consistent all the way through for the formulas to work right. But you can change them to UVA, and then you can see what happens here is this change to UVA. Now you really got to, if you had already done this, see, this is why you have to, to do that at the very beginning. You end up getting problems where this didn't change to UVA. So um, let's get out of that. I don't want to do that. But that, that's how you change team names. You do it all before you send the brackets out to people so that you don't have that annoyance that we just showed. Now, uh, so you've got the entry now. I was thinking, well, which 64 teams should be in here, right? Because we just basically showed you how to score this bracket, send it out to your entrance. Uh, if they do the Google Sheet, they'll download a copy of this blank Google Sheet here. It's the same idea in the Google Sheet. Uh, same idea, we just copy this area and you fill this stuff out. Um, this one's a little better because it goes pink if it doesn't match right. That's kind of cool. Like if you try to pick somebody, you, know, you try to pick a different team here, you try to pick Cincinnati and Cincinnati, and then, uh, well, yeah, it's it's a smarter sheet here. It, goes, it knows that Loyola Chicago can't advance because they didn't get here, so it goes pink for Loyola Chicago. That's why it's a smarter file here in the Google Sheet version, but um, neither here nor there. Anyway, so I want to go back to this because I want to say I didn't know which 64 teams would be in here. I never do. I never usually pay attention much to college basketball. Um, but this year I have done more of that and also really done some analysis on the strength of different teams and formulas. And I do have a few videos up about the college basketball file that was predicting games this year. It's been doing okay. It actually does a real good job at picking some underdogs sometimes. And I think that the strength is actually quite reliable, uh, especially when they're stronger teams. So what it does is it's a formula that, that looks at different stats that the team has, and it gives it a power percentage. And this power percentage, what I want to show is I want to say, well, I don't know which 68 teams actually, because there's playing games, should get into the tournament. But I can kind of see what the, the sports reference website, I believe, or the, all the conferences and stuff, what they – give as the top 68 ranked teams, okay? We're looking at a pivot table right now, and I just grabbed a slicer of rank, where I have all the teams' ranks that are in there, and I highlighted the first 68. And what's kind of interesting is I also sorted this descending by power percentage. So it's showing where the power percentage disagrees with what the commonly held ranking is. Um, like, it, I think Gonzaga is number one, and the ranking people think Gonzaga is number two. I think you, uh, Virginia is number two, and, and the rankings think that Virginia is number three. Okay, So really cool stuff here. I think Duke is, is a three, three team, and that's about it. Now, when I say three, I mean the third best team in the league, so they'd still be probably a one rank somewhere here in, in the actual file, right, in the actual bracket. But, um, but going down the list, I see some really – cool things. Um, I'm sure there's there's different conferences here, and I, I don't know enough about uh, how that works. Like, what's interesting is if we, if we open up all the ranks, 
And then I don't know if they have to pick certain teams from certain conferences, but you can end up like picking conference by conference and show where, you know, by the way, Vermont, I, I'm definitely rooting for Vermont. I guess Vermont is in the Atlantic East, maybe that is, AEC. And they're only a 69.4%, uh, but they're number one in that conference. I'm sure they're going to be in the tournament. They're playing really well. Now, um, what's cool is, you know, where do they fall on the, on the list of everybody? 69 is going to put them right around there, um, which is, see, we can put a, a secondary rank, actually, uh, to show what order everything is in. And you can see that Vermont is... 34th, right? So you divide that by four and they should be like an eight seed or something, I guess. I don't know, something like that. If if we did all this by ranking. So there's a lot of really interesting ways. I'm going to leave this comparison in the entry bracket for everyone this year to use, but everyone's going to have to buy the package to get this file. Like I'm not going to be giving out this entry bracket uh, as an automatic download. The Google sheet will be automatic. Everyone can access and download a copy of this Google Sheet, no charge. This is always free for everyone. I've been doing a free bracket of some sort for every year. I may as well make it the Google Sheet version because they are going to be different, and Excel is so much more powerful to be able to do things like this and really dig by conference and dig by rank and see who should be in here. If you think about anything really odd is... Um, it thinks Buffalo is a much better team. You can see the reason I'm doing this is going to come into play when you're when you're guessing who's going to win these teams. Would, wouldn't you like to go over here and say, I care about Air Force versus Alabama Birmingham? Okay, good. I think Air Force is going to lose this game, right? Because these are, you know, whatever. And this ranking agrees with this ranking. Cool stuff like that. There's all kinds of amazing things you can do with it. So that's why I'm leaving it in here for everyone who purchases the bracket. Now, if you see this video, before Selection Sunday. It's only $25 to get the whole thing, um, this file and the master bracket. If you see this after Selection Sunday, it's $50 for everybody, but I'm um, doing a lot of work for what it's worth it, as you can see, because we have, you know, think about all the time you're saving scoring the thing. What about this part where you can really analyze? Now, uh, so that's really cool uh, to dig through all these teams and, and as they pick the teams and announce them it'll be nice to pluck them off and then show them as the remaining teams then i'm going to update the custom area here and then get the brackets out to everyone is there anything else you want to talk about i'll also do videos throughout this the um the tournament uh to show how we can do additional standings changes and there's some fun ways to watch teams and how far teams can go uh, visually out here, there's there's ways to see teams that are winning and, and do conditional formatting and stuff over here that allows you to kind of have green. You see like teams that are still available for entrance because the fun part of this and what everyone always tells me is the most enjoyable is as the, the finals are happening and you get down to the last eight or 16 and then you want to simulate out who wins, you can simulate out different role-playing wins and then see who would have won the the thing by refreshing the results. And so um, it, it gives you a lot of control in the scoring. It's, it's a cool thing. It's actually better than any online uh, tournament because you can't do that in an online tournament. You can't simulate out victories instead of doing it by hand, I believe. I don't think there's any online one that allows you to do that. But here you have the control. So I think that's why people love it so much and why it's my most popular product that I sell I shouldn't say that. I sell payroll files that are more more popular, but I, I sell more of these every year than any other individual product, and everyone keeps coming back for more and loves it, and I love it too, even though I never, ever run a tournament. Now, that gets to the other thing, okay? This is the other final thing. If you stuck around for, uh, for this entire 14 and a half minutes, glasses are coming off. Okay, so here's the deal. You know what happened in the last year since we did this is the federal government legalized sports betting <laughs> or they invalidated the ban on sports betting. And I was always a little wuss and never wanted to run a tournament. I never entered a tournament. I got an email once from PayPal that said, if you're using PayPal to send money back forth, 
to have a March Madness term, understand that's illegal and don't do that. And I sent them the nastiest email back saying, I sell an Excel file and I help people run their own office pools and I, don't, and I look the other way. But I do that. I don't run a tournament. I never have. I have never entered a money March Madness tournament in my life. And I have had hundreds of thousands of people fill out my bracket over the last decade. I find that hilarious. And now it's legal. So I thought, well, if I'm going to get my ass arrested, now's the time. So here's what I'm thinking. I've already sold, uh, I've already been paid for a 10 of these at least. I've got at least 250 bucks. I've been probably more already that, that I've been paid for this. And I'm going to sell many more. And I thought, well, there's another thing I always wanted to do with, with this, which was I wanted to make it so that I got as many entrants in here as possible. Like I want to break Excel. I love breaking software. How many do you need to do that? It's going to be like a million divided by 65 or something like that. I, I, what is that? Hold on. A million. One, two, three. Is that a million? Is that a hundred thousand? Give me some comments. This is what happens when I take my glasses off, people. They're going back on. That is a million dollars right there, right? Or a million rows. If you do that, divided by about 67. Okay, if you get to 15,000 entrants, one sheet is going to break, and i got to bring in something like Power Pivot to do this. Now, uh, so I'll try to get to 15,000. I don't think it's possible I get to 15,000, especially if everyone sends me their brackets and I add all their entrants, stack them in here one by one. I want to break Excel, and also, now that it's legal to run a tournament, or at least I'll have fun fighting it in court if I ever get charged with something, um, <clears throat> all the money that everyone pays me, which is my money, I'm going to give away some percentage of it. It might be half. We might do a 50-50 raffle. I'm going to give away probably half the money to the person who has the best bracket. And we'll finalize everything. It's going to be tough because I have a lot of pasting to do. But I'll finalize a submission entry date by, by some hour before the games start on like... Uh, I'll let people choose the playing games. So everyone can send me their stacks, like or send me their files probably sometime before the Thursday start of the tournament when the 64 actually starts, sometimes before then. And I'll get them all in here, and the winner will get half the money, and it'll be in the thousands of dollars, I'm sure. Uh, so I think that's cool. I think it's legal. If it's not, I'll figure it out along the way. It's got to be legal. It's a fun case to, to fight in court anyway. Um, I'm pretty sure it's legal, especially if you don't have to. Actually, none of these people that are have to pay me for this. Is that true? No, you do not have to pay to enter. That's how I know to make it legal. You do not. You can go to the Google Sheet, and you can download an entry, and you can send it to me, and I will put it in here. I want to find out who wins. I hope somebody gets a perfect bracket, even though I know it never happens. because It's like a 1 in 7 trillion chance, a gajillion or whatever chance, some number that we can't pronounce. Um, but you don't have to enter, and I'm giving away half the money I sell this year because I've been lucky, been very lucky, and I'm going to pay it forward. So I hope this was the most amazing March Madness bracket video you've ever seen. And the glasses are going back on, and Sunday night you're going to see another video from me, and you're going to see an even more pumped up cool file to see which 68 teams made it in and which 68 teams should have made it in based on my formulas because I'm – you know, the Excel guy, and, and even also how they compared to the rankings that the actual NCA or whatever rankings, or wherever I got that from, ref, sports reference, I think. So um, awesome stuff, and um, happy March Madness, everybody.